Welcome to Cycling Vancouver. My name is Steve. I'm a 56 year old guy, six foot five, around 240 pounds, who enjoys hockey, free UFC, lots of baked goods, and cycling around the city on sunny days like today. I also enjoy freedom and liberty of living in a liberal republic. If you're interested in seeing what Vancouver looks like from the back of a road bike ridden by some old dude, sit back and relax. This is Ride 148. Today is Sunday, February 20th, 2022. It's another beautiful sunny day. A few weeks ago, it felt like early spring, but how things change in the Great White North. We are expecting an Arctic blast and I wanted to get out before that hit. According to the Weather Channel, I should expect six degrees Celsius today. That is cold, but I've ridden in worse. Time to dress warmly and bring the winter gloves again. It turned out that the weather folks were wrong. It was warmer than expected, probably closer to nine or 10 Celsius, and I didn't need the gloves. For this ride, I'm gonna head over to Kitsilano and explore the areas west of Alma. I have never ridden in there before, but I expect it to involve some steep climbs.
I'm a lawyer in Vancouver who likes to go cycling. I make these cycling videos really just to record my ride experiences and to show off Vancouver and what life is really like here. I generally do not make social or political comment in them. I just like to focus on cycling. But today is different and I'm really pissed off and embarrassed by recent developments in my country. Canada has long prided itself on its peaceful approach to international affairs. We are not a military power like the United States and have long relied on soft power initiatives to influence global affairs. Whether we have been successful is a debatable question, but we have done a lot to promote peace and respect for human and civil rights throughout the world. Since Pearson, Canada has been sending peacekeepers into hot spots around the world. Lawyers and judges have assisted various nations with drafting constitutions and creating modern legal systems more recognizable to Westerners. They have also been actively involved in prosecuting war criminals at The Hague. But thanks to a man-child Prime Minister, Canada's reputation just took a serious kick to the teeth. Because of the actions of a dangerous group of imbeciles, Canada is now a police state. Our idiot Prime Minister thought it mature and responsible to first call peaceful protesters Nazis and racists and, when that didn't work, to declare martial law and remove the rights of these peaceful protesters by freezing their assets and bank accounts without warrant or judicial recourse, all to end a small blockade around Parliament Hill in Ottawa. Now, I am not a fan of protests involving blockades of roads, bridges, railways, etc. But Canada has a long history of such conduct and, to date, authorities have either negotiated an end to such blockades or obtained judicial orders permitting removal of them. On my first day of law school long ago, BC's then Attorney General Ujol Dosanjh delivered a speech to the first year law students. As soon as he finished his speech, he ran out the door to go deal the blockade at the Gustafson Lake Ranch. As annoying and disruptive as many of these blockades were, no responsible politician ever suggested declaring martial law to deal with them. Until now. And what did that gain? The remaining small peaceful protest was removed at gunpoint. Some protesters were injured and some vehicles damaged. Their bank accounts and other financial services were suspended. Donators to the Give, Send, Go fund were declared to be equivalent to terrorists and also had their bank accounts and other financial services suspended. Not one of Canada's chartered banks objected or challenged these orders. They efficiently and willingly complied. Yet, now it seems Canada's financial industry has been threatened by large withdrawals, presumably from foreigners who thought Canada was a stable Western democracy. And two days after Parliament's majority coalition rubber-stamped approval for the martial law declaration so as to avoid an election, our idiot Prime Minister quietly stood before the cameras announcing that martial law was over and essentially begging people to forget it ever happened. Then that same idiot turned around and started lecturing another dictator about violating human rights. What a joke.
because he couldn't control his emotions and could not find maturity to go and speak with the protesters with a stroke of a pen he destroyed our country's reputation for respect for human and civil rights and if that wasn't bad enough i suspect that a significant portion of our citizenry either agreed with our idiot prime minister's conduct or at least did not object to it and that is really sad